Welcome to the Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator Facility, one of 17 national laboratories funded by the U.S. Department of Energy. Scientists from around the world come to Jefferson Lab to explore the nucleus of the atom and help us understand our visible universe. They use Jefferson Lab's Continuous Electron Beam Accelerator Facility, or CBAF, to probe the nucleus and learn more about tiny particles known as quarks, which make up protons, neutrons, and the nucleus itself. In addition to its nuclear physics program, Jefferson Lab also pursues applied research with its free electron laser and with its nuclear and medical imaging programs. The lab also works with universities around the world and with teachers from across the United States to educate the next generation about science and technology through a variety of education programs. The laboratory is operated and managed for the U.S. Department of Energy by Jefferson Science Associates. The test lab is where Jefferson Lab designs and fabricates the technology and equipment critical to its research program. It is where the lab's superconducting radio frequency institute is located. The Institute is a world leader in superconducting radio frequency, or SRF, accelerator technology. Jefferson Lab's accelerator uses SRF technology to efficiently accelerate electrons. In fact, Jefferson Lab was the first facility in the world to successfully implement a large-scale application of SRF technology in its continuous electron beam accelerator facility, or CBAP. At the heart of CBAF's SRF capability are devices known as cavities. These cavities are made from an element called niobium. When niobium is cooled to super cold temperatures, large amounts of energy can be transmitted through it with very little loss of energy due to resistance or heat. Before cavities are used at Jefferson Lab, they are meticulously checked, tested, and cleaned. After the cavities are assembled, they are installed in larger units called cryomodules. A cryomodule is a 12,000 pound, 30 foot long device used to accelerate the electron beam. A $73 million project is underway to expand and renovate the test lab and construct an adjacent facility. This new complex will be called the Technology and Engineering Development Facility and will provide state-of-the-art facilities for research in the areas of nuclear physics, accelerator science, applied nuclear science and technology, and advanced superconducting radio frequency instrumentation. The Continuous Electron Beam Accelerator Facility, or CBAF, is located in a tunnel about 25 feet below ground and is shaped like an oval racetrack. It is about 7 eighths of a mile, or 1.4 kilometers around. The tunnel is about 14 feet across and 10 feet high. Its concrete walls, floor, and ceiling are about 21 inches thick. CBAF is a very sophisticated device made up of several critical elements. There is the injector, where the electron beam is generated, and two linear accelerators, the straight sections of the racetrack, where the beam gains energy. Magnets direct the electron beam around the two arcs. This allows the beam to circulate up to five times before being directed into an experimental hall. With each lap around the accelerator, the beam gains additional energy. There's also a machine control center and the central helium liquefier. The machine control center, or MCC, is the nerve center for operating the accelerator. Its control system monitors more than 100,000 signals per second and remotely controls 300,000 data channels. The central helium liquefier, or refrigeration plant, is critical to maintaining the accelerator components at superconducting temperatures. That's a frosty 2 Kelvin or minus 456 degrees Fahrenheit. Superconducting technology allows CBAF to run continuously. Hall A is the largest of Jefferson Lab's three experimental halls. It is 174 feet across and 80 feet tall from floor to ceiling. 
During experiments, the electron beam enters the hall through a thin beam pipe and is directed at a target. The target is typically located inside a large sealed canister. When the beam smashes into a target, the particles coming off the target are focused and then separated by large magnets. Devices known as detectors then collect and record information about the particles. Hall A is outfitted with two primary detector systems, both high-resolution spectrometers, each weighing about 450 tons. The system acts like a huge microscope, allowing scientists to see inside an atom. Hall A is used primarily for experiments that study the structure of nuclei and of protons and neutrons. Hall B is the smallest of Jefferson Lab's three experimental halls. It is 98 feet in diameter and 65 feet from floor to ceiling. It is equipped with a CBAF Large Acceptance Spectrometer, or CLASS. It is shaped like an elongated sphere with a beam entering the target through a recessed notch. When the beam interacts with the target, the particles coming from the target are spread out by a large superconducting magnet and are recorded by the layers of detectors in the sphere. Hall B routinely collects about two terabytes of data every day during an experiment run. Experiments run in this hall can receive electron beam or a photon beam. A major research program in Hall B has been the investigation of the quark-gluon structure of protons and neutrons and a detailed study of excited states. Hall C is 150 feet in diameter and 60 feet tall. Hall C houses a high momentum spectrometer and has been used extensively for large installation experiments. These are standalone experiments requiring unique or highly specialized detectors, magnets, and targeting systems. Experiments run in Hall C have covered a broad spectrum of topics, including the structure of pions, kaon particle production, excited states of the proton, and duality. To expand the opportunity for scientific discovery, Jefferson Lab is upgrading CBAF at a cost of about $300 million. The project will double the energy of the accelerator's electron beam from 6 billion electron volts to 12 billion electron volts, construct a new experimental hall, and upgrade the three existing experimental halls. The 12 GeV upgrade will allow Jefferson Lab to employ new methods for studying the basic properties of the building blocks of the universe, how they are formed, how they interact, and the forces that mediate these interactions. Through experiments aimed at revealing these and other secrets of matter, physicists will use the upgraded accelerator to contribute to Jefferson Lab's mission of expanding our knowledge of nuclear and particle physics well beyond its current level. Construction is underway and experiments are scheduled to begin in the year 2015. Jefferson Lab is home to the world's most powerful tunable free electron laser, or FEL. The FEL uses the same superconducting radio frequency technology as Jefferson Lab's CBAF accelerator. The FEL has been used to conduct an extensive range of applied and basic research. After the FEL's electron beam is accelerated, the beam runs through a Wiggler magnet. The magnetic fields force the electrons to move in a wave pattern. As the electrons change direction, they give off energy in the form of photons or light. The light resonates back and forth between two mirrors, becoming laser light. Unique to the FEL is the range of light it can produce. This tunability allows scientists to test multiple wavelengths of light. Another innovation that makes Jefferson Lab's FEL unique is its use of the Energy Recovery LINAC design, which allows the FEL to recycle energy from its electrons. The FEL has been used in research toward developing a shipboard anti-missile weapon for micro-machining parts for palm-sized satellites and for developing a light-based process for building carbon nanotubes. The FEL also has been used for medical diagnostic and treatment research. 
CBAF Center is Jefferson Lab's main administration building. It provides conference, meeting, and office space for laboratory staff and more than 1,300 researchers from around the world who conduct research here. CBAF Center also houses the Computer Center, where scientists can store and analyze data from experiments. They also use the lab's supercomputers to run simulations of experiments. Adjacent to the Jefferson Lab campus is the Applied Research Center, or ARC. Built by the City of Newport News, it is home to industrial, commercial, university, and Jefferson Lab researchers collaborating in the development of new technologies. The building is also home to Dillon Technologies, a company that licenses Jefferson Lab technology for breast cancer diagnostic devices. This tour provides a glimpse into the research facilities and programs at Jefferson Lab. For more information about the laboratory, contact the Public Affairs Office at jlabinfo at jlab.org.